So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Well, actually, it's something that's in development over on the Dollywood side of things, and I figure we could, you know... Just grab the concept and remake it shot for shot, but with American actors? No. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds like a good idea. I like the idea you had. No, it's just, I feel like this could kind of be a global hit just on its own. Okay, so what's it called? It's called RRR. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly, except, no, it stands for Rise, Roar, Revolt. I kind of roared. Yeah, a little. Amazing. Now, just before we get into it, I want you to know there will be a disclaimer saying that no wolves or tigers or bears or deer were injured in this thing, okay? What, what the hell is this movie that you need to put a disclaimer like that? It's, uh, you know, it's pretty much a bromance. What? But I just want you to know, when you see a man throw a leopard at another man in this bromance, that's not a real leopard. What kind of bromance is this? And you're gonna see some tigers get punched a couple of times, once with a big flaming lantern. That is not a real tiger, okay? You know what? This disclaimer is actually kind of the perfect intro because now I need to know what the hell you're talking about. Fantastic, sir. So... You know, what the hell are you talking about? Right, so in 1920 India, these evil British people go into this forest tribe and they abduct a little girl because she sings good and whatnot. Oh, you're not supposed to steal people, I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah, see, that's the thing. That is not a nice thing to do. So then the tribe's guardian beam sets off on this epic quest to go get this girl back. And what's his deal? Oh, he's super strong, sir. He outruns a tiger and then traps it and wrestles it. Jeez, that kind of feels like, you know, almost impossible. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right? I'm, yeah, that doesn't seem possible. Anyway, so the British hear about this guy, and so they task this guy Raju and the Indian Imperial Police with tracking him down. And what's this guy's deal? Oh, well, he's super strong, sir. He takes on a crowd of like a thousand men, and he wins. All right, okay, so how are these guys able to do this stuff? Well, sir, you know physics? Yeah. Well, I don't, nor do I care to learn. Oh, okay, gotcha. It does sound more fun to just ignore all that stuff. It does, and so then these two guys are going to become best friends pretty much instantly. Oh, how? By ignoring physics together. Sick! You see, they both happen to stumble upon this little kid that needs to be saved from this big bridge explosion. So without even talking, they do the most elaborate coordinated rescue in the world, and then they have like a 20-minute montage of friendship shenanigans. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. And then Beam is gonna spot this British woman, Jenny, that he gets a huge crush on. Okay. And turns out she's actually part of that British family that kidnapped the little girl. Wow, what are the odds of that? I don't know, but I feel the same way about odds and statistics as I do about physics. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. So Raju creates an excuse for them to talk by popping the tires on her car and forcing it to stop right in front of them. Oh, destroying women's property to get their attention is tight. Yeah, it is. That's how I met my first wife, actually. Just absolutely crazy crushed her mailbox. Very romantic, sir. Crush that property. So then what happens? Well, right away, Beam is like, can I go to your house? Yeah, sure. Natural follow-up. Destroy their belongings and then demand home entry. So anyway, eventually Beam figures out that this little girl is being kept in this palace place, so he barges in there with his men and unleashes a bunch of wild animals. Oh, he does. Yeah, and so people get mauled by tigers and bears and a guy gets a leopard thrown at him and another guy gets his arm stabbed by an antler. It's gonna be animal chaos. Chaos. Wow, well listen, I had no idea I wanted to see all that stuff, but now it's what I want the most in the world. Well, fantastic, sir. And so eventually Raju's actually gonna arrest Beam, and so they're not friends anymore. A very big betrayal. So why is he doing what he's doing anyway? Ah, well see, we're actually gonna learn that this whole time he's been trying to infiltrate the British Empire to become a special officer and bring weapons back to his people and rise up. Ah, so they kind of want the same thing. Kind of, yeah. And so when he realizes that, he helps Beam escape but then he gets captured. So they're like taking turns being imprisoned. Now just once each and then they're pretty sick of it. Understandable. And how did Beam find out about Raju anyway? Oh, well one day a random woman took him in and fed him and it turns out that was Raju's fiance. Wow, geez, what are the odds of that? Oh, hey sir, looks like you're back on my back about odds and statistics again. Oh, my bad. Let me get off of that freaking unlikelihood loving back of yours. Thank you. And so then we're gonna see Raju in prison and the British guards say they're only feeding him one meal a week you know, just enough to keep him alive. Oh, geez, he must be withering away. Actually, no, he's in there doing pull-ups, you know, putting in that work, building that muscle. Right, that's not really how muscles work, though. You need protein to make them grow. They shut up, and so then Beam comes to rescue him, but he's got a busted leg, so it's kind of tricky. Oh, man, well, it's gonna be hard for them to get out of that situation. Actually, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, Beam lifts him up onto his shoulders, and then they can fight like crazy together. You'd think that'd be a pretty 
big tactical disadvantage because now they're a bigger and slower target. No, because see, it basically turns them into Goro from Mortal Kombat. That makes sense. So then Beam is going to put some leaves on Raju's leg, which fixes it immediately. Yeah, I know how leaves work, sure. And now that they're both back to 100%, it's time to go nuts on the British. Oh boy. So they just go absolutely insane and take a bunch of them out with arrows and stuff. They kick motorcycles, then they launch a motorcycle into a room that's filled with TNT and kill all the bad guys. Okay, how could they have possibly known which room to aim and coordinate? You know what, actually, I feel like you're not gonna have any answers for me, so just never mind all that. Now you're getting it. So all the bad guys die and all the good guys live and they have a big, big dance number. They're gonna dance so much and be very, very happy. That is how most movies should end, if you ask me. Although the alternate ending we shot for the Batman did not test well. And so that's about it. What do you think? Well, I mean, it sounds like a pretty good time, but you really think this is gonna be a huge hit around the world? Okay, sir, let me just reiterate. In this movie, in the middle of a fight scene, a guy just straight up throws a leopard at another guy. That's a good point. Yeah, okay, I hear it now. This is gonna do well. Hi everybody, Ryan here. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. You can let me know in the comment section what other movies you want to see pitches for. You can also let me know in the comment section what you had for breakfast today. I don't care, but you're allowed to do that. Nobody can stop you from doing that. Anyway, I hope you consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost at 1 million. Thanks again for watching. I hope you had a uh, nutritious breakfast.